Hi, welcome to lesson 20A, Discrete Variables. We're going to get back into looking at probabilities and we're going to now uh, focus on using variables uh, to represent uh, the outcomes. Um, generally, the process of randomly selecting an outcome uh, is called a random, obviously, or a chance experiment. And most of these times we're looking at uh, certain outcomes that we're looking at, these are considered experiments. Um, so, you know, flipping coins, flipping heads of coins, or rolling certain values on dice, uh, those are called experiments. So a random variable is going to represent in number form uh, the possible outcomes. So the, the number of outcomes of a specific uh, thing that we're looking for. So we're looking at, we're rolling two dice and we want to know uh, how many times a two might roll. Um, a two could roll uh, either zero times or once or twice. Okay, if we have the two dice. So the two dice could land on say a four and a six. So therefore there would be zero twos. Uh, one die could roll a two and the other one could roll some other value and then then the number of twos is one. And then of course, if both of them roll twos, that, that means that uh, both dice, of course, have um, shown the two. Um, and we're gonna be using variables um, instead of um, words that we have in the past. So in the past we've said uh, the number of um, let's see, we'll just use that same example, twos um, for a dice roll. We may not have been, we might have already talked about the dice and we just say the number of twos or something. But now we're, we'll say, well, okay, um, if, if we're talking about the number of twos uh, that we would, uh, that would come up when we're rolling dice, um, we would have that sort of in the back of our mind and we can say, well, X, our random variable, X could equal either zero, uh, X could equal one, or X could equal two. So those are all the different outcomes that could occur. And then we would say, well, the number of X is, and then we would um, do the experiment and, and determine what those values are. Uh, discrete random variables, so the, the lesson is about discrete variables. Uh, discrete random variables have a distinct, have distinct possible values. So they're usually, well, they're counted. Uh, so zero, one, two, three, et cetera. Um, if you're talking about the number of houses in your suburb being struck by lightning, uh, it's either going to be zero houses or one or two, or et cetera. You're not gonna have half a house being struck as if it's the lightning strikes the house, then it strikes the house. Uh, number of new geckos sold each year by a gecko store, um, as opposed to the number of old geckos, of course. Um, and obviously a store is not gonna sell half a gecko or a quarter of a gecko, so it's gonna sell a full gecko. And the number of defective popsicle sticks in the purchase order from a convenience store, of course, popsicle sticks need to be um, perfectly uh, fine before they get uh, inserted into the popsicle. Can't have any defective popsicle sticks, that's for sure. Um, so of course, it's again, the number of, so we're counting those. A continuous random variable is one that can take any possible value on an interval. They're usually measured values. So heights of trees, for example, if you're measuring a height, uh, it could be between zero and 150 meters, for example, depending on the height of the tree or the, the type of tree. Uh, the volume of soda in a kitchen sink, of course, it could go uh, some interval between zero and, in this case, 2,500 cubic centimeters, or it could be from zero to five liters or something like that. Okay, so it's always some sort of an interval for continuous uh, random variables. But we're gonna be looking at discrete, um, in this case, in the next uh, couple sections. Uh, so to take a look at this example, consider tossing four coins simultaneously and the random variable under consideration now is the number of heads. Okay, so 
We don't worry about the number of tails because that is just going to be become apparent. Um, so the list possible values of x. So uh, x could be so if if all four tails turn up, then the number of heads is zero. If one head turns up and three tails, um, then x equals one. Uh, if it's two heads and two tails, uh, three heads and one tail, or all four heads. Okay, so those are the um, the possible values that x could take because x is the variable, the random variable, and in this case is discrete because uh, we're looking at the number of, uh, and it's the number of heads. So we always have to consider, we have to keep in mind that we're talking about the number of heads uh, in this, and we don't worry about the number of tails. Okay, we're only focused on one thing, and that's the number of heads. Okay, so that's the possible values of x. Uh, if we want to tabulate the possible outcomes and corresponding values of x, well then this is a little bit longer job here. So uh, when x equals zero, that's the number of heads, remember, um, then the, 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 the four coins would turn out to be tail, 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 tail. Um, when x equals one, that's the number of heads. So we could have head, tail, 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 or it could be tail, head, tail, tail. It could be tail, tail, head, tail, or it could be tail, 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 head. Okay, so those, when x equals one, those are the four possible outcomes that we could have when we um, toss the four coins. Uh, when x equals two, then of course we could have head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, and then it could be tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, head. Okay, so those are the values, or those are all the outcomes when x equals two, when there's two heads that would roll. Um, and then, or get tossed, I guess. And then when x equals three, um, we'd have head, head, tail, or sorry, head, 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 tail, head, head, tail, head, head, tail, head, head, and then tail, head, head, head. Okay, so those are all those options um, or possible outcomes. And then when x equals four, when there's four heads, Obviously, uh, we just get all four hits. Okay, so that's how we would set up um, the possible outcomes to the corresponding values of x. Okay, so we're only ever worried about, or we're only ever concerned about one um, thing at a time. And in this case, we're only concerned about the number of heads. Okay, we do the same thing and say, well, if, we, if the discrete random variable is the number of tails, then we would do the exact same thing. Um, the possible values of x would be exactly the same, but we would just be focusing on uh, the tails then. Um, so <clears throat> we got a scenario here where um, we've got uh, for so we've got three scenarios, right? and we want to identify the random variable being considered. So what exactly are we talking about? So the random variable being considered is not X or Y or whatever it may be. It's actually what we're, what we're considering in each of the scenarios. Then we give any possible, or we talk about whether it's continuous or discrete. So is it, is it counted or is it measured? And then we wanna give possible values for the random variable, okay? Um, and these are just kind of, um, these will be uh, values that are, are possible. I mean, it's not, there's no uh, right or wrong answer per se, uh, and, and you'll see this in a second. So uh, to measure rainfall over a 24-hour period in Singapore, water is collected in a rain gauge, okay? So what exactly could we be, what could be the random variable in this case? Okay, so rainfall, well, it's collected in a rain gauge, 
And the rain gauge, um, generally, I don't know the dimension of this, the uh, diameter, but generally it's a cylinder and it's graduated. So it's got markings up the side and you want to see how much rain has fallen. Um, so typically then the random variable, uh, the random variable would be the height, the height of the water in the rain gauge. Uh, then, well, if if we notice this, that the rain gauge there is graduated, um, we want to know, is it continuous or discrete? Well, we're not actually going to be counting the number of raindrops or anything in here, so that's actually going to be continuous because it's going to be measured. And then for the third part, this is where it's not really a a true, like a, a one and only sort of answer. So, I mean, I have no idea how tall these rain gauges are. Um, I mean, I guess I could have looked that up beforehand, but I didn't, I apologize. So if we're saying that the random variable that we're gonna use is X to represent the, uh, the height of the water, we could say, well, okay, if, if there's no rain, then it's zero. And if it's raining, well, it's not gonna be, if we want to measure the rainfall, well, it's not gonna be, uh, equal to, it'll just be less than x. So x is going to be between zero and some value. And like I said, I don't know the height of this. Let's say, I don't know, 400, I don't know, 400 millimeters perhaps. Could that be, or 500 millimeters? Like, I don't know. I know they, what I've heard in the news, in the weather, they talk about millimeters of rain or they talk about number of centimeters of snow, that kind of thing. So let's say in the rain gauge, it could be zero between zero and 400 millimeters. Um, and they'll just, let's just kind of assume uh, that um, there won't be more than 400 millimeters of rain in Singapore in a 24 hour period. So like I said, you could have any other value in that upper limit there too, if you wanted. Uh, so for, for part B, uh, we want to see here, to investigate the stopping distance of a tire, there's the Australian um, spelling of tire, um, with a new tread pattern, uh, braking experiment is carried out. So with braking experiments and determining how, um, how reliable the stopping distance of a tire is, you would kind of, you would see how far the car will travel while the brakes are being applied. Okay, so um, I believe the random variable that's being considered would be the stopping distance. Or, or, or the distance, I guess, maybe more specifically, uh, the distance traveled by the car while the brakes are applied. So we'll say that's the distance traveled. And that's, of course, while brakes are applied. That didn't work out very well there. Okay, um, then is this discrete or is it continuous? Is this something, the distance traveled, is that something that we can count? Or is it something that we have to measure? So we can see that that's gonna be something that's gonna be measured. So that's gonna be a continuous uh, random variable. And then we want to know, well, what, what could be the, um, the possible value for that random variable? Well, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be more than zero because I don't think a, a car can like stop as they say, on a dime. Uh, so the X is gonna be between zero and something. And I don't know, again, about stopping distances, is 100 meters um, reasonable, or is it 10 meters, or 50 meters, or 25 meters? So just for 
just for uh, lack of knowledge about this, let's say it's between zero and 30 meters. Okay, and that could be the, the possible value values for the, uh, the, the interval of distance for the uh, random variable in this case. Okay, like I said, it could be 50, it could be 75, it could be 100, who knows. Um, and then for part C, uh, we want to um, check the reliability of new type of light switch. Switches are repeatedly turned off and on until they fail. So what's the random variable being considered? Well, probably I'd say like the number of times they're turned off and on or turned on, I guess. I mean, um, so I'd say the number of times the switch is turned on, I suppose. Because if you're going to take a look at when it's turned on, then you have to turn it off before you can turn it back on again. So I guess the turning it off would uh, sort of be implied, which would be the natural process after you turn it on, you turn it off, so then you can turn it on again. Um, variable, is it continuous or discrete? Well, we're not going to be measuring it with a gauge or uh, like a tape measure. Um, so that would be discrete because again, uh, here it does say number of times. Uh, so if it's number of, then that's going to be discrete. And then for part three, um, give possible values for the random variable. Well, I don't know. I mean, if it's if it's a new type of light switch, we're hoping that it's um, that it's going to last a while. Uh, so who knows? Um, and it's not going to be necessarily a range. Um, so we'd say it's it's going to actually, hopefully, it'll last more than once. Um, so the number of times would be greater than zero. Uh, and in this case, I don't know if you have to necessarily state this. Um, we've already stated it's discrete up here in part two, um, but it would be uh, part of the natural number system. Just so we know that obviously you can't turn a, a switch on a portion of a time, 1.5 times or 1.7 times or anything like that. So. Um, it's just going to be a counting number greater than zero, um, and hopefully that the switch won't break after one time turning it on. So that is, in a nutshell, uh, discrete variables. And here's some work down here at the bottom that we can work look at, please. And so um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.